But so for me, I think the, the key is really like when people are hurting, that's when laughter is needed the most. And really, laughter for me, the definition, people ask what's my definition of laughter, especially when I go to homeless shelters or prisons with, with our nonprofit, Red Blueprint. Laughter is the tangible evidence of hope. So if I can get someone to laugh, if I can bring laughter to someone, then, then we know it's hope and they can feel the fact that it's hope because they were able to laugh or smile or whatnot. Well, you've seen uh, our guest on this edition of Contagious Influencers of America. You've seen him on The Tonight Show, The Late Late Show, Oprah, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, what, Comedy Central. We've seen him on... Um, Oh, gosh, that thing Byron Allen does, you know, the late night comedian show. By mm-hmm. the way, I think Byron Allen is on all the time. His show is <laughs> late night. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that Byron Allen actually bought the Weather Channel? He bought the Weather yeah, Channel? Yeah, yeah. Paid like hundreds of millions really? of dollars for it. He so, had hundreds of millions of dollars oh, yeah. to oh, buy yeah. it? He, he's a brilliant businessman. Yeah. Why yeah. would someone want to own the Weather Channel? Because think about it. What channel does somebody always go to when it's important to go to you know what i do what? i say hey siri what's the weather in nashville <laughs> tennessee today and she tells me <laughs> well now now that we've been talking about byron allen by the way he's not our guest today <laughs> he is not our guest today today we've got michael jr who's being hailed as one of the top comedians in the country he's definitely one of the nicest comedians i've ever met i had a wonderful time talking to him a couple of days ago he is the star or one of the stars of the movie Selfie Dad. Who's also our friends in that, Shonda Pierce. Yeah, isn't Shonda's in that, that isn't yeah. she? Yeah, she is. There's some really cool people in the movie, which which uh, we're going to reveal as we get into this. And also, Michael is going to, he is going to tell us about something that he has created to help us get through this uh Post-COVID, well, I don't know if there will ever be a post, but, yeah. you, you know, I, I guess you got to find some humor in this whole thing. I don't, I don't know how you do that. You either cry or you laugh. I think I'd rather laugh. But Michael, he has created something to help give us tools to get through this, and he's going to share that with us. So let's get to the interview. Yeah, you don't want to miss this one. How you holding up? Fabulous. Amazing. Tremendous. Awesome. Things are really good, man. Where are you? How are you doing? Hey, I, I'm I'm good. I, I took a road trip. Uh, finally, I uh, have been uh, hunkered down for a couple of months. I took a road trip and got out there and amongst the uh, the living. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> what, was, what was the road trip to? I actually went uh, from uh, Tennessee up to Ohio. My folks are up there. It, it was pretty cool to go home and uh, hang out with them. Of course, the first uh, couple of days, I wouldn't hug my mom. You know, I had to do the six foot thing. And uh, mm-hmm. after a couple of days, it was five feet, then it was four feet, then it was three feet, and finally, <laughs> finally gave her a hug. <laughs> that is awesome. I actually went to a church on Sunday. And that was kind of cool because, uh, first of all, I was the youngest guy there, when, and, I, and I'm 61, so I, I think everybody else was about 90. Oh, wow. And wow. Uh, yeah, there were there were it was a small country church. There were 18 people there. I took the time to count, and everybody was six feet apart. And the really cool thing is that the guy leading the singing was probably 80, and he he wore a mask. And then the pastor, who was probably 70, wore a mask. Then he got everybody to applaud for the 95-year-old lady that got there at, at, at 7 in the morning to uh, scrub down all the hymnal books. Wow. <laughs> so it was so nostalgic, That's and it was cool. so amazing, and it was just good to be among uh, uh, you know other folks that just wanted to uh, you know get up and go to church on a Sunday morning, which is uh, quite unique these days. That's actually a really beautiful picture of community, if you think about it, Cause, because the mask is saying— that I care about the people around me. Mm-hmm. The fact that they're there is saying I care about God. And the fact that that lady got up is saying I want to serve people. Like that's a really phenomenal snapshot of just what community really means. And the fact that they're being blessed with a long life and, and God shows his salvation. That is just, that's a really a, a beautiful picture. You know, and, and that church was built, I think, in 1840. So I was in a in an old church building that has seen 
uh, the Civil War that has seen uh, the uh, Spanish flu, two world wars, uh, the Korean and Vietnam Wars, uh, 9-11, and who knows what else. And uh, by the way, the first song that uh, we sang was uh, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and it sounds like all the church members were actually at all of those events. Yeah. <laughs> So speaking of uh, community, how are you doing in in your community? And and, uh, I mean, obviously, can't imagine you're out on the road at this point. No, not at all. I'm just really uh, enjoying being at home with family and we're creating new content. Uh, I still have my uh, office space. My team shows up there uh, socially distanced as much as we can. So, yeah, things are still cranking pretty well, man. I'm, I'm, I actually am appreciate the downtime. So what have you learned over the past three months? Um, I think I've learned that I don't have to go as fast. Um, and that um, I learned that even more that I just really like being at home around my family. And if you, uh, and I think a lot of people have learned this, they may not articulate it this way. But if you limit creativity, it actually makes you more creative. So if you if you limit your resources, you become more creative. I think we're all on some level noticing that, or or people are starting to notice it. But just to, even like tomorrow night, I'm doing a or tonight actually, uh, I just put a post on social media saying, "Hey, I'm gonna do a." Uh, a Zoom comedy show, who wants in? I think sold out in like 22 hours. Oh, wow. So tonight I'm going to do my first Zoom comedy show, which is which I've never done anything like that before, but we'll just we'll see what happens. I just want to be able to connect with people, so very excited about that. Now, now, how does that work? Can you actually uh, charge for something like that? Yeah, we charge because you get a different audience when you charge money than you do if it's free. Oh, I see. Okay. So, and, and how many people can you uh, take into a Zoom show? largest account that zoom offers is, is a thousand people oh. that i'm aware of that's what my team told me so that's pretty that we'll, we'll have a lot of fun that's very cool that's very cool so are you gonna are you gonna i've do- never done this before i've never done this before so i'm gonna let everybody know hey uh we don't know what we're doing so now can you get can that. you get response back you know because uh, i guess you know and especially in your world timing is everything right i mean can you get get actual audience response back well, you know what's really cool about it is um, you you can't, I mean, you could have everyone not on mute and you can hear their feedback if you wanted to, but when I say limitations actually expand creativity, here's what I know. Like, I am, I know that God has given me this gift to bring laughter to people, right? And I know what I say. I can look, I can read facial expressions or whatnot, but I may actually put everyone on mute as far as laughter so I don't hear it. Uh-huh because it could be a little disruptive or whatever. But the, but, but the thing about that is, is, if you look at it even, I mean, it's so deep when you, when you peel it apart. Um, the fact that they're laughing and I hear their laughter is really like a reward for me. But if I'm actually in it for them, I should continue to try to deliver regardless to uh, what I'm getting out of it. So it's almost like a, uh, it's like a really cool ministry uh, moment when you do that. So like I have a nonprofit called uh redblueprint.org and I go to homeless shelters and prisons and abused children's facilities. Whenever we're doing a big comedy show somewhere, I'll stop there and do uh comedy for, you know, prisoners or whatnot. And some of my comedian friends would ask, what, well, how, how do you do that? What if they don't laugh? Well, it's, I'm not there to get laughs. I actually made a shift through prayer where I know that I'm supposed to show up and give people an opportunity to laugh, which changes everything. Because when, you, when you're given a gift, you wait, you assess the scenario, and you present the gift. And it doesn't matter how they respond. Your job is simply to present what you've been given. So, so this is really a cool way to actually exercise that. I know that people will laugh. I know they'll have a good time. My team will be paying attention and watching. We're going to do some interactive things. But for the most part, I'm really just saying, what can I give to the people? And uh, I'm excited about it. Well, we certainly need some laughter in this crazy time um, of COVID-19. You know, this has been a uh, horrendous uh, time for many people who have lost loved ones, uh, 
they've not been able to attend their funerals. We've uh, we've seen a lot of people uh, lose their their jobs. We've seen a lot of people lose their uh, savings. How do you during these times? How do you balance making people laugh? Let's just keep in mind that during the depression and uh, World War II, uh, there there were some great great performers, great comedians that came out of that that kept America laughing. And mm-hmm. during these very difficult times that you know you turn on the news and everything is uh, you know falling apart. How do you balance that out on your end? So for me, I think uh, the the key is really like when people are hurting, that's when laughter is needed the most. And really laughter for me, the definition, people ask what's my definition of laughter, especially when I go to homeless shelters and prisons with, with our nonprofit Red Blueprint. Um, the, the key for me is really to understand that laughter is the tangible evidence of hope. So if I can get someone to laugh, if I can bring laughter to someone, then then we know it's hope and they can feel the fact that it's hope because they were able to laugh or smile or whatnot. So even in the movie, even in selfie dad, the the movie, it's like, there's a point where he gets to where my character gets to the point where he, there's no hope, but then he gets finally can get to a place where he can add to that place where he can tap into a sense of humor. Everything kind of changes in a great way. So really, really excited about that, man. So yeah, as long as you can laugh, like meaning, it's hard to think about, wow, how could I laugh under these circumstances? But I've been to some pretty hard places. I'm talking about maximum security prisons. I've done shows for abused uh, children and their caregivers. And there's one little boy who was sitting in front of me at one event who had on a whole Spider-Man costume because he was so afraid his mom had been abusing him. So he's sitting on his grandmother's lap, who's now taking care of him. And he has on a full spider-man costume and his grandmother explained to me beforehand the reason he wears the costume is to protect himself because one of the things his mom has been doing to him is she was pulling out his toenails so this little boy is horrified and the mom and the grandmother every so all of these kids with all of these sad stories and then i show up to do comedy well yeah i have to be sensitive while i'm on stage i have to listen in between the gaps but i also am there to present my gift so fortunately, I was able to go ahead and we broke through and people started laughing. And then like, David, 20 minutes into it, I heard a voice come from the, my my right in the, to the audience. And the voice said, my name is Ronan. And this little boy pulled off his mask and introduces himself to me. And he's like six years old. and He's talking to me. To, to, and we're just holding a whole conversation now. And he's opened up. Well, about a year and a half ago, I got a letter from his grandmother that just blew me away. And it simply just said, Michael, I want you to know that since that day, Ronan has never put his mask on again. Now, all I did was show up with my gift. I think it's great when you give from the hip as in money, but it's a game changer when you give from the heart. And that's one of the lessons is learned even in the, the movie selfie that I think when people watch this movie, they're going to see a different side of, of what a faith based film can be because the ingredients are different. I mean, you got faith, you got some comedy and you got the Bible. How is this going to work out? Well, it, it actually does. I think people will be surprised with what they see. First of all, tell us about um, how you got involved in the movie. And is this something that uh, you want to, obviously you want to do more film, but um, what, what do you look for in a project like this? Well, I, my big thing is, and I've been, I've been offered some movie stuff before I've done, I did the movie war room. And then, uh, my big thing when, when deciding if I'm going to do a film or not is I don't want the character that I play to counter the character of God that I'm working really hard to display. So I, it just has to line up. If, and if I feel like it's, it's not going to line up then I just, I'll turn away from it. Unfortunately, I don't have to depend on acting for, for, uh, for income necessarily. So, I'm in a really good pr- place there. Praise God. So I get to kind of choose and be like, God, what, like, what do you want me to do? But in this movie, selfie dad, which I'm so excited about, cause you're going to laugh. You're going to be inspired. You're going to learn how the Bible actually affects a human, like literally. And then, um, so when they approached me about selfie dad, I read, I read through the script and I was like, wow, this is cool, but I'm going to need to add some stuff or maybe do a little, some tweaks or do adjust the writing. And the producers and the directors were, were just confident enough and 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 giving enough and humble enough to allow me to do that. 
So in this film, you'll actually see me. Um, a lot of some of the film is actually kind of improv. Like, like I get, I hit all of the lines, but then there's some parts in there where I improv, and I don't just mean comedically improv. Improv means to kind of come off the dome with some inspiration. So I did that comedically, but at the same time, I really believe that God was there making suggestions as well. And then we would follow through with them, like even to the point of changing some parts of the story. So for example, there's one part where, you know, I play a dad and I'm going through a midlife crisis, so to speak. And then my boss, I'm an editor and my boss is played by Shonda Pierce. Who's hilarious. She's awesome, but we don't really like each other very much in the movie at first. Right. So we don't, we just don't like each other. Well, we're having a hard time together. I'm not enjoying uh, this process at all, but then I have a, I have this daughter who comes in and this is some insight I'm going to give to your listeners. Right. So my daughter comes in and she tells me that she made the school play and she's in this play called Greece. Well, my character doesn't know anything about Greece. And we decided right there on the spot. I'm like, why would you be in Greece? Why don't you be in a color purple? Like this don't make sense. So, I was, you, you see me completely disconnected to her. Well, about three quarters through, way through the movie, there's a scene in the hallway where my daughter is late at night and she's just coming back from the restroom and I'm walking down the hallway and we have a short conversation. And what happens in there, in that conversation, was completely improv and completely from the Lord. And when you see it and how it connects everything together, and some people, most people will miss this. Your listeners won't because I'm saying it. But when you see Selfie Dad, you you see this scene and it's going to, I think it's some, the people who have caught it so far, people who've previewed the movie and they caught it, they were like, how did you guys do that? That wasn't like, it, it's so cool when you see it. I won't give it away, but when you guys see that scene in Selfie Dad, you, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how God put this whole thing together. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, Shonda's a good friend. So what was it uh, like, you know, when you're working with uh, another funny person? What's it like? Mm -hmm. uh, does it, is it competitive? Or do you guys try to out, outdo each other? Or, or, or how, how does that work? No. In, in a no, film, in a film just, setting. I, yeah, yeah. I did my best really to compliment her because she, first of all, she's hilarious for sure. But then she also completely knows how to act and knew her role. So her role wasn't, I mean, her role was funny, but it was to be like an a unlikable boss, so to speak. So even though her character is a boss that I don't really get along with, my character doesn't get along with, she did it in such a funny way that she had her own lane and then I had my own lane and it just works really well together. I mean, she's a straight professional. Chandra Pierce is just hilarious. And so, so this movie comes across, again, this movie isn't necessarily a comedy. It's a really, really strong story, but it just happens to have two comedians in it that really bring the story to life via some levity and some uh, laughter, but a lot of inspiration. These ingredients, again, have not been, I haven't seen them done in a film where you got faith, the Bible, and comedy. Like, how does this, like that? Every time I think about it, like it's, it's, it's the same thought people look at it when they hear about it. It's the same thing. The same look I get on their face when I, when I tell people, oh yeah, I'm on my way to a, um, a homeless shelter to do comedy. They're like, what? Well, huh? They just don't get it. And then I said, well, just come with me. And then they see what happens and they're like, oh, wow. I mean, if laughter is good, like a medicine, why would we not take it to the sick? It just, it just makes sense. So. One thing that we are attempting to do over the next few months is to uh, help a lot of our listeners who've lost so much get their tools back. Because the the way I look at it is in, uh, mm. you know, in March, you know, the economy was doing pretty well. Uh, uh, things were kind of uh, robust out there. And some of us had a, a, a you know, a lot of tools in a toolbox. Maybe it wasn't completely full, but we had, we, you know, we had quite a number of tools. And then all of a sudden we went to bed one night and this, this guy broke into our house by the name of COVID and took all of our tools out of our toolbox. And now um, mm -hmm. one thing we're going to try to do over the next few months is uh, to give our listeners some uh, ways of getting those tools back. 
And I think that wow. laughter is is something that you bring up that is so easily overlooked by the, the media. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you bring it up here. So as we move forward and we're faced with all these obstacles, how would you suggest that we use laughter in our in our daily lives and how we look at maybe look for the funnier things, the brighter things than just uh, the raw news that hits us in the face every day. Yeah. So I would say that uh, there's funny in everything. You just have to be willing to look for it. So I'll say two things. So right now, if I said to your listeners, if I said um, the color blue, so then if I said the color blue again, and I say, Hey, the color blue, anybody notice some blue right now, wherever your listeners are, they're probably in the car or they're at home or whatever it is, if you look around the room, suddenly you start to notice a lot of blue. Like you see the color blue, even though you may have not noticed it before, you're probably noticing a lot more than you did before. Um, so it's the same thing. I mean, because I mentioned that, your, uh, your brain is suddenly looking for that color. Well, if you purposely say, hey, what's funny? How can I be entertained today? What can I enjoy today? Your brain will do the same thing. It'll start to notice the funny. So I'll say two more things about this. This really is it's amazing that you asked this question. So one of them is the fact that this movie, we were going to release it in theaters on June 12th. Well, because of what's, what's going on with the virus, we actually decided instead of waiting six months or a year to release it, we're releasing it on video on demand on, on Father's Day weekend. So you actually get to see it at home from your couch with your dad or whatever the scenario is, you actually get to watch it at home. So I'm so pumped that people actually, so you won't have to look super hard for some entertainment. It's just going to lift you up. It'll be right there in your living room on June 19th. The other thing that's exciting when you talk about the tools and making sure your people are equipped, I've actually created, it's, it's amazing to actually, because we, we're right now in the middle of launching a course that we created called Funny How Life Works. And what it is, is we actually use comedy to help people and equip them with the tools needed to walk in the purpose God has called them to. But we're using comedy because whenever you laugh, you retain more information. In fact, you retain up to uh, 23% more information. Your stress is reduced by 38%. Like it's amazing. And your memory increases by like 50%. Like it's, it's pretty significant what happens with laughter. In fact, Rick Warren gave me a book. Actually, he didn't give it to me. He told me I should buy it. I'm like, dude, buy me the book. Why, why you got to send me on an errand? What? So it's a book called The Humor of the Christ, and it shows how Jesus used comedy when he was teaching his disciples. But we don't look at it as comedy because we know the end of the story, and we assume it was a sad story, but, but it wasn't. So if you look at it, so you can find the comedy. It's out there. So with um, Funny How Life Works, we're going to launch this thing at the end of, at the end of July. I'm very excited. If anybody wants more information about it, they can go to michaeljr.com and get on the email list. And we're just going to tell you about it. But I'm so pumped. And that's a great question that you asked. But meanwhile, look around. If you ask the question, how, how can I find funny today? How can I be, how can I enjoy today? It'll, those opportunities will literally show up just like the color blue just showed up. And more importantly, because you saw the blue in your, in the room or wherever you are right now, you probably didn't notice all the yellow. And what I mean by that is the negative things, because you're looking for what's positive, the, the, the negative falls into the background. So you just have to make a choice on what it is you're going to look for, actually put it in the form of a question, and your brain is just going to start to find it, just like it found the color blue in the room you're in right now. Give me an example of how uh, Jesus did use comedy, uh, as Rick Warren uh, said. What was the name of the book again? The book is called The Humor of the Christ. If you ever get a chance to read it, don't. It is a miserable read. I just want to put it out. The, the content is great, but it's, it's in like that <laughs> old English, like, oh, it was hard to read. But I read it because Rick told me to. But w- one example is, okay, so Jesus is what is, I, I, I'll, I'll paraphrase this just so you can kind of, so I can pull the humor out. But because you've heard this story, your listeners may not see the humor, but trust me, as a comedian, I can see where this would be funny, and I believe you guys will as well. Okay. So Jesus is with his, with his disciples, and they're hanging out, and they're having fun, or, or they're just hanging out, and they're doing ministry or whatever. And then this rich, young ruler comes up to him, and he's like, hey, man, what can I do to follow you guys? And Jesus can read his heart. He knows what's going on. So he says to him, 
won't you sell everything you have? Now, this isn't for everybody. This is just him because his possessions clearly has his heart. So he says, won't you sell everything you have, give it to the poor, then you can follow me. And the dude just walks off and leaves. He's like, nah, that's okay. I'm not going to do that. And then Jesus turns to his boys. He turns to his disciples and said, you know what? It would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. That is hysterical. <laughs> like, that is flat out funny in the content. I mean, if you change the contents of it, uh, like, it just makes perfect sense. So when Rick Warren told me this, then I read it in this book, and then I started redoing the math on how comedy works, which is first there's a setup, then there's a punchline. A setup is when you're thinking in one direction. The punchline is when the direction is changed in a way you're not expecting. So first he's talking about ministry. He's talking about how to how to get into the kingdom of God and how to trust. And suddenly he's going through a, a huge animal, a huge camel, and then a very small eye of a needle. That is the contrast, and that right there is what produces laughter. Well, the movie is uh, Selfie Dad. It's going mm-hmm. to uh, not be in theaters, but be uh, on VOD, which is video on demand, which I guess is at uh, what, uh, Amazon and... Yeah, Amazon Prime. It'll be on iTunes. It'll be on Roco. It'll be on Redbox on the on June nineteenth. You can see it everywhere. So it's like a theatrical release happening in your living room Father's Day weekend, and be like you get to actually see the movie at home. And I'm so pumped about that because now more people can see it. And when you watch this movie, you'll be like the word of God gets into your heart. But even more so when you add comedy, as I mentioned, because comedy has a way of opening the heart so a deposit can be made. It's just the problem in the past has been a lot of times people use comedy and the stuff they're depositing isn't really helping the person who's receiving it. Well, this right here is soaked in faith and the word of God, and there's some funny in it. So now that'll get into a person's heart in a really cool way and then maybe shed some light um, you know, just from a different perspective on how awesome God's word really is. So I'm so excited about June 19th and the release of this film at home, you know, and think about the money you're going to save on popcorn because popcorn at home costs 18 cents for seven bowls at the movie theaters. It's, it's a uh, $928 a kernel. So this is going to be great. <laughs> and then uh, we'll look for you, too, on uh, your future, uh, I guess, Zoom performances. So let's have our uh, listeners go to your uh, website. What's your website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to michaeljr.com. Uh, you can find all you can find out about the course. Just get on the list, and, you'll, and we'll tell you about the course. And I don't be sending a bunch of emails to people just because. But we have that course, Funny How Life Works. I wrote a, a children's book. We got some cool stuff. But more importantly, we like to just send comedy to people so they don't have to constantly try to look for the color blue. In other words, they can actually find some comedy that's going to lift you up in a cool way. And um, we work diligently to make sure it always lines up with God's words. So it'll be some healthy, happy comedy that we'll be sending to your inbox. Um, you know what I'm going to do, actually? Anybody who's listening we, we, I don't, I did this once on my podcast, but I know it's available now. If you go to com slash free CD, we'll actually send you a CD of my, of my comedy. And no, we got to pay shipping, but uh, you won't have to pay for the CD. We'll just send it right to you so you can insert some laughter into your life. So just go to com slash free CD. You'll get a free CD. Just pop it in or, or download it and then just sit back and laugh because it's, it's some pretty hysterical stuff, but also fully represents the kingdom as well. So com slash free CD. Um, yeah, because I think you're right. It is important that people, uh, people utilize the tools that we, that we still have. And one of those tools is the ability to laugh. So if I can help in, in that way, that's exactly what I want to do. Whether it be through the movie Selfie Dad or whether it be through the CD or people just going to YouTube and putting in Michael Jr. I'd love to be a part of that. Hey, Michael, this is a, this has been fun. Absolutely. All right, good stuff, man. Thanks a lot. Dude. Thank you. Bye-bye. So be sure to check out Michael's website. You will get all of the inside information on his uh, tools. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which we could probably all use those right, now, right about now. I tell people all the time, the thing that really happened 
I mean, if you really think about it, we all came into the, uh, I, I realize not all of us, I say we all, I realize some of you have are dealing with other issues. Some of you are, are not in the best situation. You weren't in the best situation going into the COVID. Now you're in a, a worse situation. A worse situation. Mm-hmm. But it just seems like about top of March, this evil guy by the name of COVID came into our bedroom at night and stole all of our tools out of our toolbox. True. I don't know about you, but my my toolbox was fairly full. (laughs) And then I woke up the next morning, they were all gone. My toolbox was full, but I still don't know what that one doohickey is. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm not going there. So at any rate, rate, you know, here we are. We have an empty toolbox now. And it's really cool when you have certain people step up. And they just say, you know what? I've got to help people get the tools back. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, yeah. that's what Michael is doing with, with his uh, his new program. So be sure to check it out. I would love to be sitting here and giving you dates and places where he's going to be performing. But all, all I could say is it's probably going to be his living room. <laughs> yeah. So. so, but you know what? They're, the next best thing is social media and, and go check him out. Find him. Because can't we all use a good laugh right about now? I certainly can. I mean, it's it's uh, about the only thing I get a laugh out of right now is, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I told you today my diet has been really bizarre. Mm-hmm. And being a single guy living by myself with my cat. Um, <laughs> Your cat's probably doing a lot of laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, th- there are nights that I really just, I've just gotten bored. I don't want to cook. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put the effort into making a hamburger. It, we're getting lazy. I think we are. Get, this has made a lot of people lazy. Or could, I'll speak for myself. It's made me lazy. The most exercise that I have gotten has been literally walking to my fridge. So I think the only thing laughing in my condo, David, is my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, now that things have opened up in a lot of places, I, I'm going to get emails about this. Like, you, you, you got to be out there supporting small businesses. Well, I, I do. I go to the grocery store. I still go to uh, the hardware store. I go to... Uh, oh, we're talking about restaurants. You know what? I, I went to my favorite little Chinese place. It's I, I go there so much. I did pre-COVID that I would call. She saw my number and say, you, you want wonton soup, no scallion, uh, chicken fried rice, no vegetable, no onion. I mean, literally, as soon as she saw my number. Well, I didn't go for like the last two months. But I finally thought, you know what? I miss my Chinese food. And everything was opening up. I called her. So when I went, she knew it was me. I got there. And she did not give me the, the usual smile. I think she's mad at me because I've been gone so long. So we do need to get out and support no, she's our mad, local She's mad at you because you, you've been calling this the Chinese virus online. <laughs> <laughs> She probably thought that's why I didn't come. That had nothing to do with it. You're still my favorite Chinese place. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, I'm David Sams, along with Victoria Robinson. This has been CIA, Contagious Influencers of America, the podcast from the producers of Keep the Faith. And make sure you catch us next time. We're going to keep bringing you interesting people, interesting topics, and we'll have a good time doing it. Please rate us and review us uh, on whatever platform you are on. Be sure to give us five stars because that, well, makes us look good. <laughs> uh, you know, if, as long as we look good, we still won't hey, get paid. And we need all, <laughs> it's true. We need all the help we can get looking good, especially in these uh, COVID times when we're carrying around that COVID weight. Go out there and live that life in living color because it sure is a heck of a lot more interesting than living it in black and white. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>